from classic cathedrals boasting both fascinating histories and all manner of ghostly activity, to aged parishes whose halls are purportedly stocked by the peaceful spirits of congregants long since past. Are you ready to explore five of the most chillingly haunted churches in the United States? Number 5. Grace Cathedral Grace Cathedral, located off California Street in the Knob Hill neighborhood of San Francisco, is the acting cathedral church of the Episcopal Diocese of California, and is also recognized as one of the largest Episcopalian cathedrals in the whole of the country. Historically, this parish was initially founded in 1849, though sadly, its first church would be devastated in the 1906 San Francisco earthquake, and in 1907, the organization would be forced to operate out of a temporary facility. The cornerstone for the Grace Cathedral we know today was first laid in 1910. By 1912, the parish would amass enough funding to allow for a few completed sections to act in service, and by 1914, the larger crypt was finished. In 1928, the church would launch a series of fundraising efforts in an attempt to complete its ongoing construction. By 1934, the parish was able to host services from its chancel and partially completed nave, and while further construction would be placed on hold until 1960, with the exception of the erection of its two bell towers, in 1964, the cathedral was officially finished. Grace Cathedral remains open into the present, offering services both in person and online. Predating the church's acquisition of this plot of land following the 1906 earthquake, the property was formerly owned by one Crocker family, whose home and landscaping were utterly annihilated in the disaster. And chillingly, local legend tells the whole of the expanse is haunted by their spirits, with those frequenting its bounds reporting disembodied voices, footsteps that emanate from empty spaces, and panicked screams, crying, and children's voices heard calling out for their parents, always from somewhere just out of sight. Many who have visited the church have told of extreme cold spots and the constant feelings of being watched or followed, while others have described encounters with full-bodied apparitions in 19th century clothing, sighted wandering the property, often appearing confused, and sometimes bearing grievous injuries. Number 4. The Mother of God Roman Catholic Church the Mother of God Roman Catholic Church, located off West 6th Street in Covington, Kentucky, is a notable Catholic chapel, officially titled as the Assumption of Mary, Mother of God Parish, that acts as the parish church of the Roman Catholic Diocese of Covington. Historically, in 1842, a German congregation would purchase a lot off the southwest corner of 6th and Washington Streets, and would construct a church building. However, by the late 1860s, this early structure would become overcrowded and would be demolished in favor of a newer facility. The cornerstone for our present-day Mother of God Church was laid in 1870, and the structure was completed and formally dedicated in 1871. In 1891, in preparation for the celebration of the parish's Silver Jubilee, the church was renovated and remodeled, and would welcome the addition of five large murals, hand-carved wooden altars, and stained glass. On March 10th of 1986, a tornado would ravage Covington, resulting in damages to the church's cupola. While repairs were underway, a welder would accidentally set fire to the dome, and eventually, the church would be restored to its original 1890 appearance. The Mother of God Roman Catholic Church remains open to this day, hosting a selection of masses and services while accommodating a range of events. The whole of this weathered chapel is believed to be haunted by the spirits of its former parishioners and by those who loved the church so in life that their souls returned after death. And across the property, many have reported doors that open and close on their own, instances of batteries dying inexplicably, disembodied footsteps and voices, and encounters with full-bodied apparitions in clothing spanning the eras, some of which manifest in pews praying for moments before fading away. A handful of accounts describe objects that move on their own, candles that extinguish or ignite inexplicably, orbs caught in photography, and the sensation of being brushed up against by something unseen. And the church's organ has been known to play itself and quite well, even when the building is closed and locked for the night.
Number 3. The Dexter Avenue King Memorial Baptist Church the Dexter Avenue King Memorial Baptist Church, located off of Dexter Avenue in Montgomery, Alabama, is a Baptist church famous for its hosting of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. as its pastor for a time, as well as for its acting as a meeting place for some of the most influential actions of the 20th century's largest civil rights movements. Historically, this aged congregation was first organized in 1877 under freed men and women, many of whom were formerly enslaved, and it was recognized as the second colored Baptist church. Following purchase of a lot, the church's congregation would initially meet in a small wooden structure that had previously been utilized as a slave trader's pen. In 1883, they would begin construction on a new building. In 1885, the church's first service was held in its freshly completed basement, and in 1889, the structure was completed as the Dexter Avenue Baptist Church. In 1899, William H. McAlpin, a co-founder of Selma University, would serve as the church's pastor. From 1947 to 1952, early leader of the civil rights movement Vernon Johns would serve as pastor, and from 1954 to 1960, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. would take the reins, during which time, in 1955, he would stage the Montgomery bus boycott from his basement office. In 1974, the site was designated a National Historic Landmark, and in 1978, its name was officially altered to the Dexter Avenue King Memorial Baptist Church in honor and loving memory of the late Dr. King. This notable place of worship remains open into the present and, most recently, has offered call-in prayer lines and online services in times of social distancing. The whole of the Dexter Avenue expanse has long been shrouded in tales of paranormal activity, with both staff and visitors reporting extreme cold spots, doors that open and close by themselves, and candles that extinguish and even ignite inexplicably on their own. Several have described feeling as if they're surrounded by a crowd or by multiple presences unseen, and a handful of accounts detail encounters with full-bodied apparitions in clothing spanning the centuries, some wearing the garb of former slaves, and others, more threateningly, of traitors. Lastly, the spirit of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. himself has been cited about the property, at times practicing for a speech, while at others resting and seemingly admiring both the church and the progression society has seen since his passing. Number 2. St. Peter's Roman Catholic Church St. Peter's Roman Catholic Church, located off of Church Street in Harpers Ferry, West Virginia, is a historic Catholic church recognized for being the only church in the community to escape the Civil War unscathed. Additionally, as an interesting tidbit, the street running adjacent to St. Peter's is actually part of the Appalachian Trail. Historically, an early St. Peter's was constructed in 1831. In 1833, it was formally dedicated as the first parish in Jefferson County, and in 1896, the initial church building was deconstructed, with our current St. Peter's erected on the old foundations. For around a century, St. Peter's would act as parish church to both Harper's Ferry and Boulevard. However, facing limited space and a shortage of priests, in 1999, it was merged with St. James, and work on restorations was started, some of which persist to this day. This weathered Catholic church remains in operation into the present, offering regular masses, including a service at 9.30 a.m. each Sunday for guests to Harper's Ferry National Park, and is also a popular venue for both local and visiting weddings. Over its lengthy existence, St. Peter's has been associated with a number of scary stories and tales of the otherworldly, with its staff and parishioners reporting extreme cold spots, disembodied footsteps and voices, and constant electronic malfunctions. The most famous legend surrounding this old parish tells of one Father Michael Costello, who, through the Civil War, bravely opened the church as a hospital and served all people regardless of faction, performing last rites for those dying and officiating burials when needed. 
The apparition of Father Michael has been cited about the church and surrounding neighborhood and is often mistaken for a living person until he walks straight through walls or disappears entirely. Also reported at St. Peter's are orbs visible to the naked eye, strange mists and fogs that manifest in photography, the constant feelings of being watched, followed, or even of being touched by a presence unseen, and encounters with both shadowy figures and entities in Civil War era clothing or uniforms. Another popular story surrounding St. Peter's tells of a young soldier who was mortally wounded and who died on the step of the church as he was being carried in by nurses. A youthful apparition clad in uniform has been encountered at the front door, and around sundown, many crossing the stoop have described hearing a disembodied voice utter the words, Thank God, I'm saved. Number 1. St. John's Episcopal Church St. John's Episcopal Church, located off the corner of 16th Street and H Street Northwest in Washington, D.C., is a historic Episcopal church placed about one block away from the White House that's often recognized as the Church of the Presidents due to the fact that every standing president since James Madison has attended it at least once. Historically, this aged church organization was first founded in 1815 as St. John the Evangelist, and on October 27th of 1816, its first service was held in what was then a brand new structure. Later the same year, President James Madison would begin his tradition of keeping a reserved president's pew. Through its early operation, the church would rely heavily on pew subscriptions, and while they would offer President Madison a pew for free, he would opt to pay instead just like everyone else. In 1842, as it grew in popularity, the church would undergo expansions to allow for more seating, and in 1883, the site was renovated completely, with its windows filled in with stained glass featuring deceased members of its congregation. Sadly, in 2020, a fire would heavily damage St. John's Parish residence, the Ashburton House, though fortunately, the whole of the church building itself would go untouched. St. John's Episcopal Church remains open into the present, offering weekly services while accommodating special events, often including guest speakers or tours of the campus. Eerily enough, the whole of this seasoned place of worship has long been tied to stories of supernatural phenomena, with those frequenting its bounds reporting doors that open and close on their own, lights that flick off suddenly, leaving all present in total darkness, and disembodied voices and footsteps heard from empty spaces. One prominent legend associated with St. John surrounds its impressive 1,000-pound bell, which was constructed in 1822 by Joseph Revere, son of none other than Paul Revere himself. As this fable goes, when this bell tolls for the death of a significant person, six ghostly men in white robes manifest in the president's pew right at midnight, albeit only for a moment before vanishing. Some have theorized these entities are notable names from our country's very history, paying their respects to future generations past. Also reported across the property are orbs captured in photography, strange mists and fogs that descend upon the area alone, the constant feelings of being watched or followed, and encounters with the apparitions of former presidents, one of the most common of which is Abraham Lincoln. Taking its intriguing and influential history into account and coupling it with an impressive assortment of ghost stories and local legends, we felt St. John's Episcopal Church was the perfect choice as the most haunted church in the United States. Thanks for joining us for our picks for some of the most haunted churches in the United States. If you enjoyed our histories and ghost stories, go ahead and subscribe to our channel, throw us a like, and share us with anyone you feel could use a good scare. We'll catch you all next time.